we've got it here. He said, in general terms, what I notice an audible difference between an 80 watt uh, channel, 80 watt per channel, five channel amp, and 120 watt per channel, five channel amp for speakers that handle, say, between 20 and 150 watts. So my thought on that, and then you guys can kind of share what, what you think as well. Typically, when you double the wattage of an amplifier, you're going to gain three decibels in volume. So if you were to take this, you know, everything the same and just double the amplification, you should hear volume increase, three decibels. Some people say it's hard to hear only three decibels. Um, you know, like five is kind of a good range where it's, oh, that's really noticeable. So you may or may not hear a difference, you know, just like going, wow, going from, say, an 80 watt to 120 watt. So that's one benefit of having extra wattage. Um, I tend to prefer to, to have amplifiers around the 200 mark. And the biggest reason is not that I necessarily need those, but it gives me quite a bit of headroom. And anytime you have headroom in an amplifier, you don't have to crank it up as loud. And if you do decide to really crank it, you're not hitting the, the peak of the amplifier. And you, you basically reduce the risk of like clipping your amplifier, which is going to cause distortion and ultimately just destroy your speakers. So you don't ever want to do that. So having an amplifier that's too like low, if your speakers especially are not sensitive, so basically they take a lot of power, like Bowers and Wilkins, great sounding speakers, but they're relatively inefficient. They're a lot of times they're like 89 decibels with one watt. And so you have to crank them up pretty loud um, and feed a lot of volume into them or a lot of amplification into them to get them to be a certain volume level if you really want to crank it. So having 200 watts to me is just kind of a, just a good amount. Um, but depending on what speakers you've got it connected to, 80 watts could blow you out of the room, you know? So if you've got like Milo Scala's or Clips says they're rated at 104 decibels with one watt with a microphone at one meter. Now, whether or not that's a hundred percent accurate, there's a lot of debate there, but I can assure you that they are, very efficient speakers. You can power them with really, really low wattage and get a really loud volume out of that. So um, part of the answer to that question is, what do you have those connected to? So what do you guys think? Yeah, your, looks, your La Scala is basically, if you plug it into like a headphone, it's just blasting, right? It's headphone loud. app, that's all yeah. you need? <laughs> oh, no, it's loud. Well, there are, there are um, plenty of guys that run La Scala's with two amps. And two amps, sometimes yeah. they're like 10 watts. And yeah. And your ears will give out before the amplifier does. <laughs> I mean, I'm, dead, I'm dead serious. Yeah, your, yeah. your ears will give out before the amplifier and yeah. speakers do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I would say, okay, I don't know that I've heard like a huge difference going from, you know, let's say my AVR mm -hmm. to the Parasound. Mm -hmm. right? I just like having it. Yeah. You know, I like, I just like knowing that the power is there. Mm -hmm. Whether I can hear it or, hear it or not. I don't know if it's just in my head, you know? I'd have to like do some measurements to see like, oh, look, the bass is uh, more extended when you have it, you know, turned up, mm -hmm. at, uh, you know, 95 decibels or something like that, right? right. Um, the only time I've actually noticed a difference is back in the car audio days. You know, I had a pretty powerful amp and, you know, you'd hear systems with like, you know, thousand watts plus. And then you'd have a friend who'd have like the same speakers mm -hmm. But like the cheap out on the amp, yeah, right. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but like you have the same speakers. Yep. They get a cheap amp that's like five thousand weird... watt Boss amp. Yeah, instead of like, instead of like Kenwood or or, mm -hmm. or Rockford, they'd have JL like a Kenford. Audio. Yeah, they have a Kenford or something. <laughs> exactly. You know, some weird Kenford, brand. Sparkomatic. Right? That was a good one back in the day. <laughs> and so and this, when you hear that amp, their, right? Uh, their Toyota Accord, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the Hyundai. XL. So uh, what what you'll hear is. Uh, Usually in the bass, it makes the most difference because that's what requires the most power, yeah. right? Bass. So if it doesn't have enough power, you'll just hear distortion. You'll hear it like it just doesn't sound like clean power. Even if the woofer can handle it, right? It can put out more uh, sound pressure level, but it won't do it in a clean fashion if you don't have enough power. Now, when it comes to home theater, <clears throat> it's a little bit different because if you have subs, right, your subs are going to take care of most of that already mm. right it depends on the volume you're listening at yeah. right but for the most part if you have subs then you have crossed over maybe 60 80 hertz 
you know, I think that in most cases, uh, AVR is more than enough power mm-hmm. yeah. for 80 hertz and above. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. What do you guys think? What, Chana, what do you think? Chana, what do you think, man? What do you think, Chana? What do I think? Yeah, um, what do you think? Yeah. What are we talking about? Wow. I don't know. What are we talking about? <laughs> 80 watts, Something about, oh, oh, watts. amplifiers. Okay, so... I I I just took a um cell phone decibel meter um you know clip I played a song on the uh what do you call it with the external amp the outlaw and I had the mains full range okay so I think 170 per channel two right. channels 8 ohms driven 8 ohms both channels driven then I went to the A52 plus two channel 8 ohm is like 225 and there was a definite i left everything the same the front end was the same receiver <clears throat> right i just plugged in the amp and mm-hmm. played that that song again and there was a 30 percent increase in db 30 mm-hmm. percent. so if that makes any difference is it noticeable problem no. <laughs> not really no. not really um it, and then again like what joe was saying if you're running just a full range speaker and not a sub when it comes to movies and LFE, Mm -hmm. you're probably going to notice the difference of having an external amp and not having an external amp. Um, Like I run mine at 60, my crossover at 60 on the mains. So I'd let more Mm base information go into them, but I have now a bigger power amplifier, which is the what a 51 from Parasound, which is like, you know, 400 Watts, four ohms or something. And I think the speakers are, six ohm or something Mm -hmm. um so it's putting out a lot but it can handle that lower um crossover point because that amplifier is just pushing pushing a lot more situation power so you know you know it's a better way to kind of do this i think is if you just match it with your speakers because it's going to really depend on how sensitive your speakers are right so for Mm -hmm. michael's la scala's yeah no problem like 80 watts is probably more than enough right Mm -hmm. now if you're talking about some very you know, low sensitivity speakers, 83 sure. decibels or something yeah. like that. That's well, you know, you might notice a big difference between 80 yeah. and 120. It might. Right, so right. my point being, will will that amplifier with your particular speakers mm-hmm. get you to the point where it's it can play as loud as you want it plus a little bit of extra, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. if it can get you to that point already with what, yeah. what'd you say, 80, 80 watts, watts, yeah, then... Maybe you wouldn't notice a huge difference going from to 120, but if 80 if is not enough, right? Yeah. I then think you that, may want 120. I think the right? biggest, so it depends. I on think you. where his question's coming from is he hasn't bought an amplifier yet, so he's considering oh, A, right, B, or right. C, and this one offers this, but this one offers this. I would go with the one with the higher wattage. Typically, that's the right it. answer, yeah. but you know, there's typically a price difference in that too. It's like okay. Is the four hundred dollars worth difference? Kind of yeah. thing? And, and that's what a lot of people want to know. And so again, there's a lot of variations. You know, how big is your room? If your room is really tiny, you're not going to need a ton yeah, of volume. True. If you if got you're... a massive room and it's an uh-huh. open floor plan, and it, you know, you got a um, like in your living room, Chana. I mean, and, and yeah. So stairs, actually, you got that open staircase. I, I, so. I measured it out, right? So I did one meter away. Mm-hmm. And then I did a second meter away and it drops three dB. Yeah. And then I did the third meter away, yeah. it drops another three dB. Yeah. And we sit 14 feet back. So that right. was, uh, so you're losing that was volume. 12, 13 feet. So we're losing uh, nine dB. Right. Or sorry, six dB um, just sitting where we are. Now, if we were only six feet away, yeah. then we're only losing three dB mm-hmm. from that, you know added on to that one meter kind of situation so um that definitely plays a part in it and then yeah. if, you know I, I honestly i think the size of your room um like if you got like we got to open open up to the kitchen open mm-hmm. it up to the stairwell i think right. that volume mm-hmm. really has more of an effect on your subs as opposed to like, like your, your just speakers. Your, your speakers yeah, yeah. gotcha yeah and probably because they're directional you know did we already say uh, thank you to Sammy? We did not, Sammy. Thank Appreciate you, Sammy. that, bro. Thank you for the super chat. Absolutely, man. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think it's just uh, going to depend, like Chana said, on your yeah. room. Uh, like Michael was saying, on the sensitivity of your speakers. 
and then what you like are you gonna yeah. listen loud what is what is the content you're gonna be listening yeah. do you have good subs yeah. all these but of course you know it's the safest bet if you can afford it is to get sure. the more power the more app as yeah, long I, as it's like real wattage too yeah, so right. be careful yeah. that it's not like peak wattage yeah. you know we're talking about real power R rms it's like cars or, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah rms is what you want to look at yeah. all channel all channels driven sure you know stuff like that and that's um, and that's the reason why you're going to a five channel amplifier for your home theater because you get an out a reading mm -hmm. in all channels driven because yeah. all the avrs oh 140 watts times two full bandwidth at eight ohms okay right. cool and then they're like oh you know 600 watts times one six ohms with like 2.5 percent thd yeah. and you're like no yeah, one I do kilohertz only that. yeah, yeah right. one kilohertz then, then once you add all the you know you got 11 speakers powering now you're yeah. you're like down to 55 watts a channel yeah you know, so, I, so i so in in that respect an 80 watt by five is mm -hmm. definitely a step up from an avr sure. yeah right that's true um but uh, but I always say like if you want to power the front three with a five channel amp mm -hmm. that'll work. You if you want to, too, sure. I only have I have ten speakers, so five ear level, five high channel. So in my to me, my mind was like, okay, I'll get a five channel amp and power all five ear level speakers. Yeah. That's cool, right? So they're they're all at the same level, and then I got another five channel for the um, height height speakers. So they're all um, at the same wattage too. So I think I've got my my power situation kind of dialed in. So don't get the amplifier uh, that says 10,000 watts at 100% distortion. Yes, that's not correct. Good, right? that's the not moral good. of the story, don't do that. So here, here's something quite interesting. So Kanga hit, hit right on it. So another thing you have to think about is what they call it impedance dips. So for a long time, I thought that my 8 ohm speakers played, you know, I mean, they were based, the amplifier was always seeing an 8 ohm impedance load. But what I later found out is, especially with the Klipsch RF7s, they actually, like during bass heavy notes, they'll dip down to like 2.4 ohms. So when it dips down to that low, that's basically telling the, and forgive me because I'm not like super, super technical, but basically it's telling the amplifier, I need more power. And so that amplifier is going to be sending out a lot more power than it would at 8 ohms. That's why when you have an amplifier that's rated at 100 watts into 8 ohms typically it's like 200 watts into 4 ohms so you don't have to have 4 ohm speakers to be able to pull out that 200 watts so compare that to an avr you're never going to be able to pull 200 watts from any of those channels versus a dedicated amplifier so there definitely is some benefits as well as that in that impedance dips and and every speaker is going to be different in regards to that yeah, these guys in the comments are saying frequency dependent and that's what mm -hmm. i was kind of saying earlier yeah. it's usually in the base area yeah, that's where correct. it dips down there that's where you it's know, gonna demand is, the most things yep. like that so uh you really have to worry about the base area yeah um, but you know we're not really the guys to ask because like if you were to ask chana <clears throat> like how many horsepower you need in his car need yeah right how many how many do you need chana like 500 or something like that? I only ride one horse at a time. I'm at 333 right now, so I'm, I'm at a good level. Yeah, <laughs> eh, not, not quite enough. I can only ride one no. horse at a time, so I don't know about 300 horses. I like I like, I like, like the AMG, Chana. Oh, well, you know... That was, um, that was, that was good. That was, that was the a, okay. The AMG, that was a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, like, like, I know people, like, read a lot of, you know, it's... It, on the back of the speaker, it says 20 to 150 watts. Mm -hmm. Me, in my mind, I'm like, okay, cool. I want to put 250 into that sucker to see what happens. That's, I that's, I, I want to raise it up by 100. <laughs> yeah. That way, mm -hmm. that way we can see this, the yeah. speaker actually working. And yeah. that's also why I have that Parasound A51, you know, just, <laughs> just, just literally just because <laughs> speaker companies like, oh, what are you going to power it with? I'm, I'm going to power it with this. Oh, okay. That's it. There's no like, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, no you questions. Need more. Yeah, exactly. It's the, you know, the pedigree, it's the mm -hmm. reliability, it's the true power, and it's, you know, <laughs> 250 by five, and then 400 oh, by, by five with four ohms speakers. So it's just, it's nuts. And I had, I had those Cornwall fours, just mm -hmm. stereo. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine it's probably pushing like 400 watts into those things. And it was so loud. Normally I would have, the volume at like 72 it was like at a 40 
Yeah. <laughs> it was just nuts and it was loud. I was and that's like, the thing. Oh, you'll God. never you'll never get four hundred watts into the Cornwalls. Like mm. ever. If if yeah, you no, actually if good. you ever measured it, I mean you might have been pushing like forty watts. I mean, it's insane. They're very, very they get very loud very quickly. So Nisa. 